Today I'm going to show you how to make Seville orange marmalade. It's a two day process so I'm just going to show you what you need to do on the first day first of all. I've got approximately two pounds of Seville oranges and one unwaxed lemon. Now first of all I'm going to take the lemon away and just weigh the oranges. The oranges weigh two pounds three ounces. I never use metric, always pounds and ounces. It doesn't matter, you just have to remember that you need double the weight of sugar tomorrow. So tomorrow I will need to weigh out four pounds six ounces of sugar. It's a good idea not to use too much more than four pounds of sugar because then you will have too much in your pan once you actually start making the marmalade and you don't want it rising too high up your pan. Before I start cutting the oranges I'm going to use the lemon. The lemon is going to go into a pan with just a bit of water and it's going to simmer for the length of time that I'm going to be cutting the oranges. The reason for doing this is that we're going to extract the pectin and the flavour from the lemon and use that water to soak the oranges. I've cut the lemon up and I'm very pleased to see that it's got lots of pips. What I'm going to do with the pips is put them into a jug of water. Here's the jug. It only has a small amount of water in it, you don't want too much. And I'm going to put all the pips in there. All the oranges have been thoroughly washed and now it's time to start cutting them. What I like to do is cut them into eight and as you cut them you'll see that they are absolutely full of pips. All those pips need to be taken out and put into the jug of water. So that's what I'll do first of all with this orange. All the pips have now been removed and put into the jug with the water. So now I will take the flesh from the peel so that I can separate them all and cut the peels together. Now a lot of recipes say that you should put all the flesh into a muslin bag. Now that's not the way I do it because I don't see the point in wasting all this fruit and discarding it as mush. You can cut it up and it goes into the marmalade and the beauty of several oranges is that all the pith and all the peels once they are cooked turn translucent. Now it's time to cut the flesh into slices. This is why I always use a plate instead of a chopping board because then you don't lose the juice. So now all the flesh has been sliced. When you do this you will spot any pits that you missed so you can put any that you find into the jug with the others and now it's time to slice the peels. I like to put four together, stack them together and just slice them all in one go. Try and make the slices as thin as possible. Once you have completely cut up your orange, just tip it all into your pan. This is the pan that I'm going to be making the marmalade in. And then cut up your next orange. So here are the oranges all sliced up in the pan. Here are all the pips in the water. And what we're going to do now is put the water, fresh water, on top of the oranges.
But what we're going to use first is the water from the lemons that we have been simmering. So make sure that the oranges are level in the pan. Pour on your lemon water. And the lemon water very nearly covers the oranges, but we need a tiny bit more. So I'll use some from the jug. And that just about covers the oranges. And what we're going to do now is let that soak overnight. And as for the pips, they're going to stay in the jug. I'm going to cover the jug, cover the pan, and they're both going to stand overnight. It's now the next day. The peel has been soaking overnight and so have the pips. And I'll show you what they both look like this morning. You can see there's a lot of juice with the peel. And the idea of soaking the peel is so that it soaks up the water and the juice and starts to soften. However, if you test it with a knife, you'll see that it is still fairly hard and we're going to have to simmer it until all the peels are completely soft. That one really does need a sharp knife to go through it. And before we start simmering it, we're going to add the pips in a bag. Now I'll show you the pips what they're like today and they have practically solidified and that is excellent because we know that we have a lot of pectin going into this marmalade. You can see it's gone like a layer of jelly filled with pips. So here is my bag. The books tell you to use a muslin bag. I made this by folding a dishcloth in half, a new dishcloth in half and sewing it together. You're supposed to use plain, but the dye doesn't run. I've been using this for a long time and the dye is completely stable. It's slightly discoloured now and that is all natural dye from fruit. So I'll now pour in the pips and the water in the jug. There are a couple of pips staying at the bottom, so I'll get those out. And the beauty of making a long, thin bag is that you don't need to tie the top with string. I just roll up the top and knot it. And to get that last bit of pectin that's lurking in the jug, I'll just wipe it with the end of the cloth, the end of the bag. Now the bag is going to sit in the pan and it's going to be brought up to the boil and then immediately turned down and it's going to simmer until all the peel is soft. So that's going to take, I don't know how long, when it's finished I'll tell you how long it took. The orange has been simmering for an hour and 45 minutes on a very low simmer and it is now ready and I'll show you how I know it, that it's ready. Fish around with a wooden spoon and find a particularly chunky piece of peel if you can. Fish it out on your spoon and then test it with the blunt side of the knife and if it goes straight through with absolutely no resistance it is now ready. So I can now take out the bag of chips 
I've already let the pan cool down so it's quite easy to take out with my fingers and I'll put that into the jug for the moment and I'm going to show you that at this point I'm going to add an optional extra. Here I have six large pieces of crystallised ginger and I'm going to chop them into small pieces and add them to the pan. So in goes the chopped ginger. And now, because the bag has cooled down, I will squeeze out all the juice from it because there will be pectin in there that is going to help with the set. It feels slightly like glue. And the last bit from the jug. That's the pips finished with. Now, if you'll remember, I needed four pounds, six ounces of sugar. I've measured out the first two pounds because the scales don't hold enough for me to put it all in at once. And I'm going to add the sugar about four large spoons full at a time. I've got a very low heat on under the pan and I'm going to add it bit by bit I'm going to wait until this first lot of sugar is dissolved until I add the next four spoons full and I'm going to carry on until I have added all the sugar the sugar is now all dissolved it all comes much higher in the pan now and it's beginning to look like marmalade so I'm now ready to start bringing it up to the boil to bring it to setting point. Now to test for setting point I'm going to put a little bit of the mixture onto a plate but this plate is going to go into the freezer to speed up the whole process of the test. So that's going to be in the freezer while I bring the pan up to the boil. The mixture's now come up to the boil. You can see it's quite frothy. I'm keeping it moving because I don't want it to stick and I'm going to let it boil for no more than five minutes. If you boil for too long at a time you can destroy the pectin. It's been boiled for five minutes. It was still quite bubbly and foamy when I turned it off the boil. It's now got no heat at all and I've let it subside and you can see that the froth has more or less gone and as it cools you probably can't see it but I can and it's tending to form a skin already which is very promising so I'm going to take out a little bit on the spoon put it on the plate and I'm going to leave that aside for a few minutes to test for a set if you look at the pan now you can see the skin forming across the top and testing on the plate if you run your finger into the blob it rumples up so that means it is ready to pot up it will set now I'm not going to do that just yet because I've got another optional extra I'm going to bring it up to the boil again and then afterwards I'm going to add this which is just over half an inch of cheap scotch whisky. I'm going to bring it up to the boil again because I don't want the additional liquid to affect the set. So I'm going to test the set again after I've added the whisky. Here it is on its second boil. It's only boiled for about a minute. I've just turned off the heat. 
you can see it's still a bit foamy and I'll add the scotch and it smells absolutely lovely now I'll let it cool down and the foam subside so it's time for the second wrinkle test and it's wrinkling up beautifully you can see that the surface is wrinkling up so I'll give it a good stir and now it's time to put it into the jars I use a fork to prevent splashing and then when every jar is full or as I fill each jar I use the fork to give it a bit of a stir to make sure that the peel is evenly distributed so I'll carry on until it's all in the jars the jars have all been in the oven on the lowest possible setting so they're all warm and they are roughly the same temperature as the liquid that's going into them so that there's no risk of cracking the jars it also sterilizes the jars as well by having them hot so here they all are ready for the lids to be put on you'll see that I prepared too many jars which is better than preparing not enough and once the jars are tightly screwed on I'm just putting them on gently for the moment I'll screw them on properly in a few minutes but once they're tightly screwed on as the jars cool down they will create an airlock and the jars need to be left in a cool place so that they can set and it's important to leave them for about 24 hours don't move the jars or knock the jars until the marmalade is thoroughly set now this marmalade once you do your own homemade marmalade you will never want shop marmalade again shop marmalade will start tasting too sweet and bland and adding the optional extras of ginger and scotch gives it a nice grown-up edge <laughs>